Ah, greetings followers. You're joining me on uh, Saturday the 17th of March 2018. And in fact, it's two years to the day since I first rode a zero electric motorbike. Yeah, so exactly two years ago, went over to uh, a street bike in Hillsowen and borrowed their demo bike for a spin out around about the area. Very impressive. So yeah, it's, uh, as I say, it's Saturday and uh, I thought it was about time I did another little video, had a catch up, you know, a couple of bits of news I wanted to talk about. First one is probably fairly obvious. Um, yes, I have uh, I've managed to get a Garmin Verb 360 camera, uh, which I was pondering getting last summer before I did the trip uh, uh, the trip into mainland Europe again, around uh, oh, all around the shop. Videos are on the channel if anyone's interested. Uh, I was. Planning on getting one of these for that trip, but in the event, they weren't quite ready for the UK market. And it's probably no bad thing that I waited uh, anyway, because there's the usual stuff with initial firmware releases, updates, etc. So, yeah, a few months later, I've, uh, I've finally taken the plunge and uh, invested in one. So, in case you haven't gathered already, you can, while you're watching this, uh, you can actually move the the picture around and move the direction any way you like. So it's recording 360 degrees all the time, which is great. It's going to be fantastic for, for trips. So, you know, I could relive trips and there's interesting things that I went past that I didn't necessarily quite catch a glimpse of. I'll be able to go back and uh, reinvestigate and things. Yeah, I know, very geeky, but you know small things and all that so yeah that's the that's the first bit of news the the other bit I suppose is um, this is the first video I've done since I did the the first ever electric motorbike trip from Land's End to John O'Groats um, and subsequently of course to the top of Shetland uh, if you haven't seen any of those videos <laughs> go make yourself a drink and um, yeah there's quite a bit that it, it's probably overwhelming in some respects I, I did I recorded the whole of the journey from beginning to end um, which I've uh, I've now archived safely away um, I didn't do the challenge as a an official Guinness record or anything like that because I knew at the time that you know technology with electric bikes is moving on so quickly that any sort of record attempt will be easily smashed and in any case I wanted to enjoy the trip I didn't want to be you know busting a gut just riding charging riding charging riding charging I wanted to enjoy the trip doing it doing it the first time you know being the first to do it was enough of a, of a feather in the camp as it were so um, yeah that I wasn't really bothered about like I say about time at all so yeah first video since that trip uh, reflections on that trip well I've put together on my website a whole lot of information about that trip I've got links to all the videos I've got images uh, press clippings press interviews uh, did a couple of radio interviews I did one with Channel 5 news and they're all on the website there's um, articles from local press uh, up in Shetland and uh, there's one from oh, I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember it's bike or ride magazine now Ooh, very bad very bad and then there's one from the IAM the Institute of Advanced Motors and they did a little article on it and uh, also one from Zero from the newsletter so uh, thanks to Zero for that as well um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of reflection on that website as to my feelings of the trip. Uh, you know, there's a long, there's a nicely written out long account of it. And um, I hope some people will enjoy reading through that. It's, uh, I mean, if anything, it's good for me just to have that, that record and effectively like a diary. So, but yeah, like I say, hopefully, hopefully someone else will enjoy it. 
Um, since since doing the trip, I've been kind of catching up on all the archive material, putting the videos together. Uh, but also, I was trying to push the fundraising a little bit more, and uh, wanted to continue to to raise funds for the two charities that I ended up supporting on the trip. I've got to be honest; I'm a little bit disappointed at the at the response to that. Um, it's not anyone's fault other than I'm not that well-known a person. I don't really want to be that well-known a person, but the actual trip itself, I was hoping would get a little bit more coverage than it did. Um, aside from the, the channels that did cover it, you know, there was no mainstream... I don't know, maybe it's just me. I thought, you know, this is, this is quite a big thing, this. It's the first time it's ever been done on an electric motorbike. It's going to be commonplace in the future, but this is the first time it should be a bit of a story but uh, yeah maybe it needed something glamorous to do it for it to, to sort of attract that kind of attention I don't know um, so yeah a li little bit disappointed in the response in terms of the, the fundraising side of things I've left it open and I would urge anyone to uh, seriously consider uh, donating uh, all the details are on the website I'll put a link down below and yeah if you can find it in your heart to donate I'd really really appreciate it there's been a there's been a lot there have been quite a few donations and I'm very very grateful to those who's donated it's very very kind and there's been a couple of especially generous donations um, but I had hoped to raise a thousand pounds which would equate to 500 pounds between the two charities and yeah, I'm probably about halfway there which is a little bit disappointing given given the time that's elapsed so yeah anyway moving on from that um, in terms of the bike I have had absolutely no problems with it at all uh, none whatsoever it has been fantastic the last few months it's been great to ride and I've I've used it quite quite a fair bit we're on uh, we're on 5,430 miles just coming up now. Now I don't commute or work from home, so it's not being used on a daily basis. I tend to use it for my observer duties with the IAM stuff I do, uh, the check ride. So that's where it gets used the most. Uh, occasional that the trolley's out, but otherwise, you know, it's not being used on a daily basis, but it has performed flawlessly no no more issues so the initial the very initial one I did have yeah it, it was definitely just a lemon it doesn't appear to be a general problem with zeros I, and I know actually from the community that is not and we're starting to get some snow yes the beast from the east as it's been called is back again <laughs> who'd have thought it eh snow in winter <laughs> one investment I'm quite proud of having made uh, and also is tinged with regret for not having made it sooner are these things on my my these ear mitsies these gloves these are Gerving XRS12 heated gloves I wish I'd bought them years ago right now here's a bit of advice for anyone new to biking Forget what anyone tells you about heated grips. Don't bother with them. They're absolutely not good enough compared to heated gloves. Just get heated gloves, save yourself a load of bother, and you'll be set up. I, I'm using these on both my petrol bike, my CBF, and this, the Zero DSR. Um, I have it set up so that they are, uh, there's a lead permanently wired onto the battery of the petrol bike. Well, the power distribution module, I should say, but um, it amounts to the same thing. And in the case of this Zero, I'm actually using a lead they do, which goes from the from the 12 volt socket, the AC socket. So I've got that connected at the front, and I'm using that to power the gloves. And they are absolutely fantastic. And like I say, I wish I'd bought them years ago. 
Uh, I was finally spurred on to get some after a trip in November I did on the petrol bike up to the Peak District and my hands got so so cold they yeah, heated grips on the uh, CBF but they're not they're not they're really not great uh, they don't ultimately they don't cover the your fingertips and your fingertips are the things that are exposed you're better off with hand guards or something I think uh, although people who have hand guards say no they don't make much difference well, the, the ones I've spoken to anyway so you kind of pays your money it, it takes your choice I ultimately I tried some on at the motorcycle show back in November and yeah, I could feel I could feel the job they were doing and just thought, yeah, you know what? It's time to um, it's time to give these a go. And as I say, I wish I'd done it years ago. My hands are nice and toasty. 2018 seen the launch of the new Zero DSR 2018 model, which has got a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery, nominal that is. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what it is usable, but it's, uh, yeah, 40.4 nominal, I mean, this is 13.3, 13 nominal and 11.4 usable, I think, so, it, it's probably going to add, I don't know, 8, 9 miles realistically to the range over this one, but uh, what's more significant with the 2018 model is the charge tank accessory, which is an optional extra, uh, now supplies a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charge rate to the to the battery, which is quite a difference actually, because the one the one that works for this this bike is will give you a 3.3 .3 kilowatt charge, which is it's not great. I mean, it's, it's not worth the money, frankly. I suppose if you were you were oozing money it might be worth worth a punt but nah it, it's it's too much for too little benefit 3.3 .3 kilowatts is not going to give you a, a massive boost in terms of charging time the 6.6 .6, now it's becoming interesting because 6.6 .6 kilowatt well, you could do the maths quite easily it's uh, a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery charging at 6.6 .6 kilowatts so yeah, you're looking at around about two hours to charge it. That's going from nearly empty. Now that's <coughs> that's still too long. Let's be, let's be honest for a proper touring machine. That still doesn't put it on on a par with a regular petrol bike. But but it does make it a hell of a lot more attractive and optional extra to buy. Now I would probably seriously consider that. Uh, and indeed when it comes to looking at replacing this bike next year it, it's something I will give serious consideration to the uh, the charge tank whether it is worth it but I, th I think it may well be thing is it's it does open up extra extra longer journeys for you because you don't have to charge obviously for the for the full tank for, for the full battery you don't have to do that so for instance if you're out and you just can't quite manage the distance all you've got to do is find a uh, a char level two charge point of which there are many around and plug in and grab a few minutes worth of charge it doesn't have to be two hours you know you're going to be you're going to be putting in extending quite the range quite quickly with just a few minutes charge so yeah, potentially quite a useful accessory. And indeed, indeed if I had done my Land's End John O'Groats trip using one of those, that would have made things a hell of a lot easier. A hell of a lot easier. But, well, uh, there's something we may have to come back to in the future then. And eyes left for the impressive car showroom. Yeah, just on the left there. Yeah. Some nice, nice cars in there. Oh yes, I think zeros are expensive. Woohoo! Oh, this is very pretty Henley and Arden. For those who are interested in the tourist trail, it's a nice little place. This one of the pubs here was 
uh, landlord was, uh, I don't know if it's the black swan actually, that one there, or this one further along, I think there's a white swan here as well. Um, Michael Elphick, the late actor, the guy who played Boone and was in um, was in EastEnders for a while, he was landlord of the pub here for, for many, many years. But yeah, pretty little place, Henley, if you're if you fancy a trip to Warwickshire in the summer, especially, this is a nice place to come. It's not far from Stratford. You just carry on along this road I'm on now and you get to Stratford. So, vice versa, if you go to Stratford for a little holiday or whatever, yeah, just come along to Henley and Arden. It's a nice little place. There's a very nice ice cream shop just down here. Uh, you can't miss it because people are always queued up outside it. But, yeah, Henley and Arden worth a visit. You wait there, matey. There's the ice cream place. Henley Ice Cream. It's the original name. Does what it says on the shop. Want a bit of shade. I've got a new helmet as well. This Kberg Duke. So the old hideous luminous <laughs> luminous. The old uh, Dayglow yellow is gone. And uh, I have moved to this Kberg. So it's still a still a modular, you know, flip face lid. So I, I do like that style of helmet. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's considerably cheaper than Schubert C3 Pro. It fares better in all the sharp safety testing, and it's yeah, it's about half, it's under half the price, I think. So it was time for a new helmet, and you know you should you should replace them every really, what five or so years, or four, five, six years, whatever. But uh, it, it was time, and I was I kind of glad to get away from that. Hideous, hideous day glow thing. Ooh. Just have the safer takes in this. Now, fellow YouTuber, I'm missing the fly. I borrowed, uh, borrowed a DSR recently and uh, seemed to get on with it really well. Loved it, absolutely loved the bike. But unfortunately, he posted a recent update and said, uh, said he'd ripped the bike off. Now, I don't know whether I was exaggerated, uh, you know, clickbait as it were, but um, it, uh, it didn't look as bad as it sounded. I'm sure it was quite frightening for, for the missing the fly himself but um, the bike looked <laughs> it didn't look written off but uh, what do I know it's, it's down to an insurance person ultimately to decide so who knows but interestingly the circumstances that he described when I'd seen when he started initially talking about it I thought I don't really know what's happened here, and um, I think it's kind of worth mentioning this to anyone who borrows one, who should decide to take one out for a check ride, um, a test ride I should say, check ride. Uh, just be careful with it, because if you come from a petrol bike background and you get on one of these, the torque will blow you away. I mean, it really will. It's, it's fierce. Now, and that's great, you know, you get on and you go, oh, this is tremendous fun. But, 
just be wary of it, especially on bends when you're turning. It's, it is sensitive and it's quite forgiving to throttle, but it would be easy to grab a little bit too much of a handful and um, spin the wheel. So, what I'm going to say is, if you do borrow one, and you decide to have a little play with the custom settings, which you can do, given that there's three modes. Uh, if you put it on custom setting, you, you'll see that you can wind the power up to 100%, and you can wind the regen braking up to 100%. And the first thing, of course, lots of us do, myself included, when we get the bike, is we go custom mode, 100% power, 100% regen. No, I just avoid it with that splash thing. Go! Uh, just to have some fun of course and do you think well I've got the other two modes I've got the eco mode if I want to take it nice and easy and not have too responsive a throttle I've got the sports mode if I want you know a fair bit of throttle and I can stick it in custom for silly mode <laughs> yeah just beware of silly mode that's all I'm saying so uh, my advice would be from personal experience of now only one of these for coming on a couple of years is if you if you do mess around with the custom settings set the power set the max power to about 70 percent and the same with the region actually set them both to around about 70 percent so around three quarters you know thereabouts ish don't ramp them right the way up now you might think, well, where's the fun in that? But trust me, there's enough power. <laughs> there is enough power. It doesn't need to be on 100. It, it's, it's excessive. And um, without traction control, it's, you know, you, you, you can come unstuck. So just go steady if you do borrow one go out and enjoy it, open it up, but just do watch out for that, especially on Ben's turns. Anyway, I've got, I was glad to see them missing the flyer is uh, escaped from the incident. Fairly well seemed fine, seemed a little bit embarrassed, but you know, we all would. What I would recommend, and I noticed the, the, the recent missing them flyer um, video, I haven't watched it yet, but it's only flagged up like yesterday. He's, uh, he's done the video about going and doing a bike safe course with, uh, I think it's the Met Police he's done it with. I can't stress enough how good any kind of advanced training is to bike riders. I know biking is a bit of an ego thing for a lot of people, but we can all improve. Everybody can improve. And that's the right mentality to have you know the class one police riders will tell you that we never stop learning and we don't ever stop learning you know I, I've I've gone through the IAM course I I passed my test I think I did very well I managed to get a first somehow <laughs> miracle of miracles but that's kind of like the, the, the top grade you can get on the initial pass and then you can go on from there you can go on and do further training because it doesn't stop that's the beauty of it you can go on and do the next qualification which is called a masters and that is the highest civilian riding award that you can get in the uk you know that's next stop is police level stuff but there's other things you can do you can go you can go do your test and then you can train to become an observer which is something i did and that's really nice because you're you're helping out other people with what you've learnt. Of course, you learn quite a bit. Thank you. Ta. You learn quite a bit just doing the, the training itself. But it's amazing how, how much you benefit from helping other people. So you're just following somebody behind, watching this plan on the left. Uh, you're just following somebody behind, watching what they're doing and giving them feedback on how, things they can do to improve the riding. And having the luxury of sitting behind somebody else and watching them make mistakes, I'm doing, I'm doing great stuff, you know, don't get me wrong. 
sometimes you do things and think, oh, that's, that was really nice actually. I might use that. I might use that in my riding plan in future. It's it's very beneficial and um, it's a it's a very nice feeling to think, well, you know, potentially you might you might just end up saving somebody's life. We can all benefit from training, all of us, and people who are going to be the best riders are going to be the ones who can put their ego to one side and say, yeah, well, I've always got stuff I can learn. No matter how good a rider I am, there's always more I can learn. And if, you, if you've got that kind of personality, and I have, I love going out and having somebody behind me and sort of pulling my riding to bits and saying, why, why did you do that? And question, more importantly, question me, why did you make that decision? You know, that's, that's a lot of what advanced riding is about, is... Uh, is making you a thinking rider so you're, you're planning your riding of course your observation has to get up to scratch but it's making you decide why you do certain things like holding back from that cover I know it has a, an image of a bit of an old man's pursuit, but honestly it's not. The, the club's great, and uh, it's a lot of like-minded people. Social rides are great, so <clears throat> in my case, anyone around the Coventry Warwickshire, Coventry Warwickshire area, you have come along to, to our club, look us up on the website, and uh, come along, see what you think. Uh, but do do it, I, I've put it off for many years. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous about <clears throat> going through it. But I did, coming back to what I was initially talking about, I did do the initial um, bike safe course back in 2008. And I found it very, well, initially it was very disheartening actually. The first day I had my riding pool to bits. And it was quite, it knocked my confidence. But the second day it came together on the Sunday. And I left that day and my riding was completely transformed. Straight, straight away, just for two days, just for a weekend, I was suddenly positioning differently. My observation was much better. Yeah, I just made that step up. Now, I didn't, it then took me quite a few years before I finally summoned up the courage to go along to the IAM and join there. But I've since thoroughly enjoyed that. I just recommend it to anyone. And... Um, yeah, I'm glad, like I said, I'm, gl I'm pleased to see the Missenden Flyer uh, enjoyed the bike safe course that he did. And uh, yeah, hope he continues with it, hope he continues with the training, whether it's through through us, the IAM, or through Rosper. Avoid the potholes, pass the windmill. Something else I had done a couple of, uh, couple of months ago to the bike, so I had it treated, uh, winter treated with ACF 50. I do use ACF 50 fairly regularly on the bike, on both bikes actually. Uh, for those who don't know, ACF 50, anti-corrosion formula 50, it's, um, it's a product that was developed by the military actually, I believe, for aviation purposes to stop uh, corrosion on um, fighter jets. I think that's right, I think that's the story. In any case, it's used by... Uh, they certainly used in aviation, but um, bikers got hold of it and uh, realised how useful it was to have something, you know, that, that stops corrosion. So, you can buy it in cans, it's it's not cheap, well, it's not hideously expensive, uh, you, and you don't need to use a huge amount of it at all. You know, you put it on a, you should put it on a cloth rather than on the bike, and then wipe it over the bike. Um, and then effectively polish it off. It does give a really nice shine, but it's quite... Uh, it's quite sort of viscous stuff. It's, and it's quite tacky as well. But importantly, it does actually creep. So when you put it on the bike, it will actually creep into like the crevices and things. 
and it gives you very good water protection but not only you know not like uh, WD-40 in terms of water displacement but it does actually fight corrosion actively so it goes beyond the, the WD-40 type of thing yeah and there's this company that's called I think it's An All Year Biker I'll check that I'll give them a shout out uh, it's a lot of this, they basically have a lot of people around the country and they'll take your bike they give it a really deep clean initially and then they'll they fine treat it with this uh, ACF 50 or there's this alternative substance which is even more uh, robust but uh, there are downsides to it apparently the, the other one which I won't go into you can go read that on the website I, I went for ACF 50 anyway it's a product I'm familiar with and I use myself so they treat your bike with this ACF 50 uh, really really carefully so they spend like yeah two two hours uh, two, two hours on a bike two three hours just get it absolutely mint this so this bike looked immaculate after they'd done it and my cbf thousand which has got quite high mileage on it shall we say that's um that came up amazingly well looks looks great afterwards so very very pleased with that and of course what it what it means is you, your bike's pretty well protected against the winter if you if you do ride if you are an all-year biker indeed then your bike's going to be in fairly good shape because it's going to fight any corrosion any salt off the roads anything like that This is Meriden, the historic centre of England. It's not really, don't tell her. <clears throat> it's the historic centre in here, traditionally. So I'm going to say ahead now. So reflections on my trip from London to John O'Groats. Uh, would I do it again? Yes, I would actually. <laughs> I would do it again. I'd do it slightly differently. I think. I think that the charge tank I discussed. I think if I had the charge tank, a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charge tank, in on the zero, I'd uh, I'd do it again definitely. Um, it was a bit of a faff with the external charge packs I mean it was don't get me wrong it was the only reason I could do it so I'm not, <laughs> not ungrateful at all for the for the fact that I was able to borrow them but just setting up the cables when you wanted to charge was a real it could be a bit of a pain it was less of a hassle when I was charging from a level 2 socket and I had I got to use my the um, six way socket I'd made up uh, that wasn't so bad because I just needed one socket then but otherwise I had to get out two extension leads and um, plug in everything separately uh, and that was, that was a bit of a pain yeah the the actual built-in charge tank that would make a significant difference so yeah I think I think the answer is when when time comes to get a new Zero. I probably will do that, and I'd love to do the trip again. I, I genuinely would. I've waffled on long enough. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, as always, and uh, please subscribe, please like, please share, and talk to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>